You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Today, we're going to read a story about Oakland. We've done some stuff on San Francisco, not necessarily anything on Oakland. Today's article that I'm reading is Mayor and the City Council President Collide Over Policing with Focus on Crime in Chinatown. So Chinatown in in Oakland, outside of San Francisco, it's got some issues. There's some heavy crime going on. Sounds like Seattle. Sounds like Portland. What are they doing about it? Well, they've got some of the same, same arguments going on there, obviously, that other major West Coast cities have. Let's take a look. Before we do... If you're new here, thanks for being here. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies. I cover topics that impact real estate. I cover topics that you like to hear. So let's jump on in. And to the listener slash viewer who sent me this story, thank you so much. Your name starts with an L and it rhymes with Harry. How's that? How's that for an anonymous, anonymous uh, shout out? Thanks again for sending the story. And if you guys want to send semi stuff, that's great. Sean, S E A N, at Seattle Real Estate Podcast.com. Send it there. At a Wednesday press conference in Chinatown to discuss a series of disturbing robberies and assaults targeting Asian seniors in neighborhood shops, Mayor Libby Schaff criticized City Council. We've got the mayor, we've got the council going at it. City Council President Nikki. Fortunato Bass's approach to public safety. So the mayor is criticizing the city council president. Hey, what are you doing? This isn't how we handle this. With Bass standing behind her at the gathering, Schaff said that a budget proposal drafted by Bass last summer, a plan that was voted down, would have cut police services and made crime in Chinatown even worse. So we've got this whole defunding the police thing going on in a lot of cities. And there's this great debate between, okay, we are trying to get rid of systemic racism in the police force. We're trying to work on that. We've got crime increasing. Oh, no, we don't have crime increasing because we'll look at these stats, not these stats over here. And yet the news stories coming out of these cities are like, oh, my gosh, this isn't good. Look at the shootings in Portland. Oh, my gosh, those guys are just shooting each other left and right. It's crazy. So different opinions on how this is handled or how this should be handled. Bass, and again, this is the city council president of Oakland, whose district includes Chinatown, responded to Schaff, who is the mayor. uh, Is that correct? Yeah, Mayor Libby Schaff. Responded to Schaff in a Facebook live stream. A little live stream. That's aggressive. Filmed with District 3 council member Carol Fife last night. Bass said that she felt attacked by the mayor and added that what Schaff said about her budget plan was just not true. Bass noted that recent cuts to Oakland Police Department, which removed police officers from some parts of the city, including Chinatown and downtown, were made by Schaff and city administrator Ed Reiskin in December, not by her and the rest of the council. So the moves that they're criticizing were made by somebody else. All right, but they still happen, right? I want to set the record straight, said Bass in a live stream. During the press conference, Schaff defended these budget cuts and police service reductions made in December as necessary to avoid a fiscal emergency. Okay, so maybe you don't have a fiscal emergency happen because you made a bunch of cuts, but you're going to have another kind of emergency, and that is people involved with crime having to deal with that on an accelerating basis. Basically, citizens are not going to be safe. And what we're talking about here is is Chinatown in, um, in Oakland. In an immediate sense, the city's two most powerful elected officials were criticizing each other over who was responsible for police staffing in Chinatown. Because the heat is on Chinatown, you got a bunch of crimes. We'll get into that as what to, to what's going on. But you've got this kind of back and forth uh, dialogue going on and a critical back and forth dialogue. But on a deeper level, their disagreement represents a fissure between city leisure leaders like Schaff, who have publicly stated support for largely preserving or even expanding police spending. That's what I believe in. And those like Bass who want to dramatically reduce the the police budget and shift some public safety duties away from the Oakland Police Department's armed officers. All right. So this is what we're talking. This is what we continually keep talking about is, in my opinion, reducing the police budget. And that's a no go. 
Um, I would rather see if you've got an issue with what the police are doing, get them some more training, expand the budget. That's my bottom line. I'm a real estate guy. That makes sense to me. Shifting the public safety duties away from the police department, their armed officers. I'd like to see that work in reality. And yet I can't, I, I, I'd like to see that work in reality, but I don't want to go through the social experiment of seeing how that actually looks in reality, because I kind of know what that's going to look like. And that's not where we want to be shifting responsibility. Mm, okay. Yeah, but the people that you're shifting the responsibility to aren't trained, and they're not armed like the police officers, which is the argument for having that done. But in reality, mm, the stuff that the police respond to, there is some stuff that maybe you can have a social worker respond to. Most of it, let a cop sort it out. Let a cop sort it out. That's their job. Meanwhile, it's not yet known for sure whether this tense exchange reflects a real change in crime patterns. It might be true that there's been an increase in violent robberies over the past several weeks in Chinatown, but the Oakland Police Department hasn't publicly shared data supporting this claim. Uh-oh. Do we have conflicting data going on? Do we have a story here that uh, one says one thing and one says another thing. Kind of sounds like we do. You can always you can always massage the stats to get what you want, right? Crime reports for the entire city in the area that encompasses Chinatown show a drop in robberies and burglaries in January 2021 compared to the same month last month. But members of the Chinatown's merchant community say the increase is real and demand immediate action. That's what I kind of feel like is going on. I keep hearing, oh, but crime is down. And yet the news stories I keep seeing are like, that doesn't really reflect that narrative to me. Looks like crime and criming is getting worse. And maybe it's just the kind of crimes that that we're talking about. Oakland's budget is at the center of the public safety debate. Two opposing visions of public safety in Oakland have been on a collision course since protests against police violence kicked off again this summer, leading to a searing debate about how policing should work across the country. The Oakland City Council voted last year to seek to seek deep reductions in the police department's budget and reinvest money in services and programs meant to address the root causes of crime. I keep hearing that and yet I don't really see any end results. I'm I've just I haven't seen them. If somebody can point those out to me, I'm more than happy to bring them up right here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. To that end, the city convened a reimagining public safety task force made up of volunteer residents and co-chaired by Bass and Council Member Lauren Taylor. The task force is supposed to send recommendations to the City Council this spring before the Council prepares the next city budget. On the table are cuts to the Oakland Police Department and funding for non-police mental health services, civilian traffic enforcement, and much more. Okay, so if they can figure out non-police mental health services, I'm fine with that. You don't need to send a cop out on every call. But you need to send a cop out on most calls. I mean, you just – a lot of these calls, I just wouldn't be comfortable with, oh, yeah, send that social worker. Let's see how it goes. I don't know. That just doesn't feel right to me. I understand where they're kind of heading with this. But there's so many judgment calls that are made, and only the cops are really trained to handle a lot of this stuff, right? I mean, am I just being naive here? I don't think so. And I think a lot of people are like, all right, but in order to make that judgment call on how to handle this, you've got to have some ability to deal with what if this call isn't exactly what we think it is, and it goes wildly sideways. Is a middle-aged social worker that is unarmed, are they going to be able to handle, are they going to be up to the task? Number one. Number two, should they be doing the task? And these are just things I'm throwing out as really super obvious. Um, but let's kind of get back here. But the task force members are divided about what to do. Some are wary of making significant police budget cuts. Mm, I wonder why. And the group has spent weeks debating what their core principles should be. So we are rethinking, we are reimagining in Oakland, right? The task force is far from reaching a consensus about how to transform public safety through Oakland's budget. And Oakland's a big, big town. That's a big city. That is not a city you want to cut, cut police budgets and go, well, you know, we'll just kind of find out how this is going because, you know, our crime's pretty minimal. It's not. They've got some pretty good crime going on, right? Meanwhile, gun violence has skyrocketed in Oakland and other cities with black and Latino men most likely to fall victim to a shooting. 
The COVID-19 pandemic's economic impact has created massive shortfalls in city tax revenue, and the Oakland Police Department overspent its budget this year, mostly on overtime, contributing to huge deficits in the city's general fund. So now, so because they need the cops and they're paying them overtime, and they don't have enough cops basically on the street, on the roster, as most of these cities don't, they've got a huge hole. And so the answer is, well, we've got a fiscal problem. We need to get our budget in line. Let's get rid of police officers. No, I don't think that is the answer. That doesn't. That just doesn't seem like the prudent and reasonable thing to do. And the reason you're listening to this podcast is because we are reasonable people. Does this make sense? Cut the police department in a time of rising crime and shootings to people of color? No, that to me, that's a no go. In December, Schaff and Reiskin cut $29 million in city services to help balance Oakland's 2021 2020 and 2021 budget. This included a $15 million reduction to Oakland Police Department's overtime, special u- specialized units and programs, which help pay for foot patrol units, community resource officers, and the anti-gun violence ceasefire unit. That sounds like the unit in Portland that they just got rid of, and their shootings have gone through the roof. I mean, dramatically increased down in P-Town, in Portlandia. Um, just yeah, just crazy. As a council member from 2011 to 2014, and as a mayor since 2015, Schaff has supported the possibility of growing the police department, all right, and adding police officers. Since 2015, Schaff has successfully proposed budgets that grew police spending each year, and from $241 million to $330 million this year. To put that in perspective, I think... Seattle Police Department's budget for 2020 was a hair over, it was like 411 million, something like that. So Oakland is, uh, went from 241 more million to 330 uh, million this year. So they are definitely a smaller budget, but still pretty significant. And you start monkeying around with these numbers. You see the same thing going on in Portland. Bass, who joined the city council in 2018, has been more critical of the police. Last June, she proposed a $25 million budget cut to Oakland Police Department as a first step toward larger future cuts. But at yesterday's press conference in Chinatown, Bass told business owners and others who were assembled that she supports their goals and that the reimagining public safety effort is meant to increase Oakland Police Department's ability to address violent crime. You are talking out of both sides of your mouth if you are saying that to a bunch of business owners, because the business owners are like, okay, you're going to try and you're going to cut funding to the police department. You're going to reimagine public safety without a real plan that's been proven to work. And yet we are still supposed to get customers and suppliers into our businesses And they're afraid. That's the bottom line, right? That's why these people are, they're worked up because they're like, hey, this isn't safe anymore. This isn't where we want to run our businesses. We want to achieve an ability. And and this is, uh, this is Bass, the, the council member again, we want to achieve an ability for Oakland and our police department to be able to focus on violent crime. Whether it's our black community out in East Oakland, where there's a very dramatic increase in shootings, or it's our business communities like Chinatown that are impacted by armed robberies. There we go. Okay, so armed robberies going up, East Oakland shootings in the black community going up. Do we cut the police department budget at this point in time? I don't know. That doesn't feel like a smooth move. Because then we have re we are reimagining and rethinking without a real plan. And that's what bothers me is if you've got a plan in place that's been proven to work somewhere, put it in place, go for it. All right. And I'd want to see what those what does that look like? Instead, we're just, "Ah, let's cut the police department, and then we'll reimagine and then we'll rethink how we're going to make this all work with crime exploding. Schaff, the mayor, closed out her remarks at the press conference by focusing on Bass and Councilmember Rebecca Kaplan, who also supported large cuts to the police budget last summer. Cuts that were never made. Some of these are this is exactly the same thing we had going on in Seattle, right? We had the whole chop jazz thing where part of their, you know, three major 
uh, requests made by the people who basically took the chop slash jazz area were defund the police by 50% now. And then the mayor, our mayor came in. I mean, the mayor is not a dummy. I mean, in some, some aspects, she makes decisions that I don't agree with. But she is an attorney and she's like, okay, we cut the police department by that much. Ooh, crime in the city. It's not going to get taken care of. It's already not getting taken care of. I just had a conversation with one of my real estate brokers yesterday. We had an incident where down in Gig Harbor, which is to the south and west of Seattle, pretty far away, like an hour drive, had an issue where we needed to get a police officer out there because there was some shenanigans going on between a house stager and a builder. Just ridiculous stuff. But Things do come up where you have to call the police and they were able to call the police and get a police officer from Gig Harbor out there very quickly in Seattle. And I was telling my broker that wouldn't have happened. Cops wouldn't have shown up. There would have been no police support on that. In, in my opinion, I've, I've, I've read about so many different calls of nonviolent crime where nothing had really happened. Police are spread too thin. They can't get to the crime and going on. And even if something does happen, Odds are there's going to be minimal follow up because they're spread too thin, they can't get to it. And they also know that even if they do arrest somebody, prosecutors here in Seattle, they're not going to do anything about it. All right, you didn't murder anybody. Okay, you're good. We'll see you later. Don't come back. Or when you do come back, you know, we'll do the same thing. We'll do the same song and dance. You get the automatic Seattle get out of jail free card. I'm very pleased to hear from Council Member Nikki Bass and from Council Member Rebecca Kaplan that they support these additional resources that the Chinatown community has asked for today, Schaff said, referring to foot patrols and security cameras. But I have not forgotten that this last summer, they, they brought a proposal to cut $25 million from the Oakland Police Department at budget as a political statement, not because of our operational or financial needs. Oh, okay, so now we're, we're talking politics. So maybe it wasn't, maybe it was, was budget, maybe it was political. If that proposal had passed, those walking officers would have been gone long ago. So I do not forget that history. I hope you do not either. So mayor of Oakland, kind of calling it the way it is, just say, stating, hey, you guys proposed $25 million cut. Those people wouldn't be here and this situation would be even worse. Bass rejected the mayor's characterization of her budget proposal, which sought to cut money mostly by freezing hiring for up to 46 vacant police officer positions and trimming $10 million from the Oakland Police Department's operations and budget maintenance, um, which include things like office supplies and equipment. That $25 million reduction did not reduce community policing, Bass said on a Facebook last night. All right, so they're kind of arguing about the actual cuts that were going to be seen. So uh, did it, the $25 million reduction did not reduce community policing? No, but if you are short staffed already, and you need more police officers, and you've got 46 vacant police officer positions, if you filled those positions, and there's more police on the street, would they be able to cover more crime? Hmm. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have go out on a limb here and I'm going to have to say yes. So, they didn't reduce the community policing, but this proposal wasn't going to help it either, right? So if you need more money, you don't if if you need to hire more police officers by doing a freezing of hiring for up to 46 police vacant officers or for vacant police officer positions, then that does reduce your community policing. It does. If you need more cops in the street and you don't have the money to do it to hire, you got a, a freeze on hiring, that does impact policing. It just does, right? Are these, am I, am I way off here? I'm, I'm just not, I don't, I never, whenever I'm talking about this stuff, I'm kind of like, this is so simple to me. How, why are so many other people like, well, let's just reimagine it. Let's rethink it. Why is this a trend? How is this even a trend? I don't know. But some people seem to think there are other solutions. I just haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen them in place. I haven't seen them work. I haven't. And, and we're talking big cities. I know that it's worked in small towns and small, small, small towns where they've got lesser crimes and lesser issues to deal with. They've got a mainly peaceful population. Seattle, Oakland, San Francisco, Portland, bigger populations, not necessarily a peaceful population, right? I mean, 
that's kind of what we're saying. It's what we're talking about, trying to figure out ways to keep these populations more safe. Is crime increasing in Oakland's Chinatown? Let's take a look at that. While the divide between police supporters and reformers is a very real is very real, it's not yet clear whether the spark that set off the current debate between Schaff and Bass reflects a true increase in crime in Chinatown compared to previous years. This is a lot of what I look at too. It's kind of like, all right, are these number are these numbers going up or does it just feel that way? Or do we have a spotlight on these issues? And so we're all kind of more aware of um, you know, shootings and violent crimes and murder and stuff that I normally wouldn't, you know, look at twice because it's not really in my wheelhouse. But when you are presented these numbers to you so head on, you're like, oh, that is not a good trend. These are these are not the trends that we want to see. These are not the trends I want to see in Seattle. These are not the trends I want to see in Portland. But they're there, right? Chinatown is on edge after several recent strong arm robberies where you come in and you take stuff and you basically just physically force your way in. And an assault that have been characterized by TV news reporters as a spike in crime and a wave of violent attacks. Does a handful of crimes, does that, does that constitute that? No, but it does bring attention to these issues, right? I mean, and I don't know, maybe it is part of a bigger spike in crime. I haven't followed enough of Oakland to kind of know what the deal is. Um, so that that's part of the reason that I'm covering this story today is I want to venture out and see what how another hit, city is handling it and what are they doing how are they addressing it and they've got the exact same the the stuff that I'm talking about here with Oakland exact same stuff as Portland exact same stuff as Seattle right Carl Chan of the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce told ABC7 that he knows of a series of at least 20 robberies and attacks in the neighborhood. Chan and other community leaders organized yesterday's press conference to put pressure on city leaders like Schaff and Bass to deploy more police officers, especially through foot patrols and place surveillance cameras around the district. All right, I those are those are physical things that I'm down with. More foot patrols, more surveillance cameras. Yeah, I don't want to live in a George Orwellian state of surveillance. But if you've got a bunch of crime going on, and I'm a customer, if I see a security camera, I'm like, okay, yeah, I feel a little bit better. I'm not doing anything weird. So they're going to record me going into a store. All right. Yep, I get it. So that to me makes sense. Schaff and Bass both said in Wednesday's press conference that they're concerned about the apparent increase in crime in Chinatown, and expressed sympathy with the victims of robberies. All right, so this is a very real issue going on. The business owners in Chinatown are like, hey, what are you doing to make this more safe? In downtown Portland, um, we haven't seen much from a coalition of business owners, but man, they are getting hammered there. Not necessarily because of the spike in crime, but because of a spike in crime, in addition to a bunch of other stuff. But here in, in Oakland and in Chinatown, it's specifically, hey, we got a bunch of crime going on. What are you guys doing about it? But is Chinatown actually seeing a spike compared to others, other years at this time? Data released by the Oakland Police Department so far do not support this claim. But the business leaders in Chinatown, they are saying, all right, maybe the stats overall don't reflect an increase in crime, but our area is being targeted and our area is being hit. So business owners don't don't normally talk out like this. If things are going fine, you're not going to hear from them because they're too damn busy running their businesses. That's the bottom line, right? In Oakland Police Department's patrol area number one, which encompasses Chinatown, West Oakland and downtown, the overall number of reported crimes in January is down 60% from last January. But that's a big area, right? That's all of Chinatown, all of West Oakland and downtown. And robberies are down 40%. Citywide, Oakland has seen roughly the same number of robberies in January 2021 as in the same month in 2020, while burglaries have dropped by almost 70%. Homicides, especially deaths linked to gun violence, have risen dramatically during the pandemic. That is the continuing thread. That is the continuing um, pattern that 
I keep seeing is maybe some of these other crimes are down, but homicide, straight up murder, especially with the gun. Um, homicides, especially deaths linked to gun violence, have risen dramatically during the pandemic. But these deaths are largely occurring in other parts of Oakland, not in Chinatown. Well, the folks in Chinatown, they are running businesses and they're basically saying, what are you going to do about the existing crime going on? The Oakland Police Department hasn't publicly shared data about recent crimes within the tighter radius of Chinatown, which is bounded by uh, a number of streets. Relative to a lot of the other West Coast cities, you could actually substitute Oakland for Portland. You could substitute Seattle for Oakland. A lot of, a lot of these news stories, they are roughly the same, aren't they? I mean, th this is not an isolated deal where you've got members of the city council, depending on how they they you know, are politically relative to the mayor, you've got this stuff going on, and you've got these increases in crime. And maybe the specific numbers aren't really reflective of the actual crime going on. That's another thing is, hey, how are we reporting our stats? Are we reporting all of this crime? I know we're not in Seattle. People are saying in Seattle, well, the numbers are down. Well, yeah, because we're not reporting any of it. Well, we're not going to arrest that person because we know the prosecutor is just basically going to kick them out. They're just going to kick them out. So all of this stuff that used to be in our crime stats, I think people are just, it's not, it's not becoming a stat. It's still happening. And that's why you got these business leaders in Chinatown going, what, this is crazy. This is off the hook. We don't want this. This is terrible PR for our business district. What are you going to do about it? like to see more of that from business leaders in Seattle, like to see more of that from business leaders in Portland, the other cities that I cover. How about LA? LA just overrun Venice Beach overrun Skid Row overrun. I need to get down there and just see that firsthand, maybe from a bulletproof a uh, window through a car, you know what I mean? Just like get a window that I could film out and just kind of hide and cower in the car because do I want to walk the streets and skid row? I mean, it'd be kind of exciting, right? But then again, you take your life in your hands, you know, you roll the dice enough times, mm, odds are not going to work out in your favor. But I would like to see a lot of that in California. And I will probably try and get down there. But got a lot going on in Seattle, right? I mean, we've got our fair share of just shenanigans going on as well. But as the story continues in Chinatown, that's a really interesting one that the business leaders basically are yelling at the mayor and the city council. What are you guys going to do about this? Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I will catch up with you guys on the next one. Bye for now. to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.